players are encouraged to turn and dribble and pass to the other end. Their partner must move to receive the setback. The practice keeps all players alive. Passing, turning, dribbling and set up play are all encouraged in this practice. Earlier basic practices have now been developed into a more game related drill. This is a good practice for midfield players linking up defence and attack. Maintaining possession is encouraged by the use of the end players for relieving pressure. In this next set of practices, players are encouraged to take on opponents using various tricks, feints, dummies and close ball control. Dribbling is one of the most exciting and fun skills in football and the techniques involved should not be ignored or discouraged. As a warm up, players dribble around a small grid with a ball each. With so many players, they are forced to look up in order to avoid colliding with each other. The practice is a good general warm-up before starting a dribbling session. Players in opposite corners receive a pass from their partner before running towards each other doing a trick in the middle. The initial pass makes the practice more realistic and game related. The player receives the ball, must control it into the direction he wishes to go and then move. Younger players can start with the ball stationary at their feet. Again, it would be appropriate for the coach to call a turn so that players in the middle go in the same direction, either to their left or right. Players play a 3v3 game and attempt to get into the opposite end zone. This practice forces many 1v1 challenges which will encourage dribbling. Players are encouraged to shield the ball with their body as they run by using the foot furthest from the defending player in the dribble. Players are encouraged to use as many tricks as possible and use their imagination to experiment even if they are unsuccessful. This practice must have an ultimate objective for the players and this is to exploit space behind the last defender with positive forward runs or dribbles. Attacking players are encouraged to drag defenders out of good covering positions to create the space to be exploited. Players of any age enjoy volleying practices. Correct volley techniques are both a joy to watch for spectators and for the player to execute. It is the one technique that players never seem to tire of practicing. Players move either side of two marker cones and volley to their partner using their instep first. As with our passing practices earlier, the movement of the player before the volley makes a practice more game related. The players then progress to using an outstep volley, an unusual technique but fun to do.
Players move along the line of servers, playing a volley pass back. Movement and lots of touches are therefore encouraged. Players should keep on their toes as they wait for the end player to move back to the start. The same drill used in the chest volley technique. Fire volley, head volley can also be used. As a normal game is played on the move, we try to encourage movement within all these practices. The players must really concentrate in this set of drills. In this practice, players are again forced to come off at an angle, move and volley back to the server. These drills can be progressed to a small-sided game seen in a while. Players are encouraged to use different foot surfaces to play the volley. Players in a grid run to any server, receive and pass back on the volley. Again, as players are always on the move, this drill can be used as part of a general team warm-up. The movement also forces players to receive balls from various angles and distances and use varying surfaces of both feet and so developing their volleying technique. A 2v2 volley game where players must volley from one end of the grid to another. Improvisation and good technique are encouraged. Opposing players attempt to intercept the ball and then volley themselves. To keep the practice flowing, if players cannot volley the ball, they can either catch or head it. Heading practices with normal footballs may not start until players reach under 13 level. At that stage, the following practices can be used. We start with a basic drill where the player pulls the ball into his head and heads to a partner. This encourages the player to use his forehead and to use his neck muscles for power. The practice gets young players used to heading the ball with the correct surface and realise that it does not hurt. Incidentally, with younger players, deflate the ball slightly for initial heading practices. With the youngest players, the use of foam balls is a good starting point. For older players, they can be made to start on the floor and jump up to head the ball. This will encourage good spring to give extra height. A 
a similar drill to the volume practice used earlier, where movement is introduced. Again, concentration levels are high and players need to stay on their toes. Now introduce a passive defender in front of the heading player. This gets the player used to playing with some opposition. A heading game where two players take turns to set up and head through two marker cones. Players are encouraged to head the ball downwards by getting over the ball. Also, power is needed for success. With many of these drills, a competitive element can be introduced. In this game, winning pairs can move up along to the next grid. Losing pairs move down. The top grid can be the stadium of your choice, Wembley or San Siro. Set up and head, who wins? Many team related drills can start with the players using their hands to catch the ball. The coach can then go over his key points for the session without concern over foot control.